the song is a really old song. It's from the 16th century and it's an old Scottish lament. And it's about a sailor who drowns and comes back to say a final farewell to his loved one. And I discovered that there are three different versions of this song. I've recorded myself sing all three versions and had them play simultaneously under each of the three bridges that cross the Clyde. And I always liked the bridges. And you know, you have the Clyde that carries its own stories. And I think from above, it looks really magnificent. But then below, it, there's a, it's darker and more atmospheric. And uh, you know, I see it more as the, the, the dark, sort of underbelly of Glasgow, if you like. I'm, I'm really interested in song and the emotive and the psychological effects of song. So I think when people hear a voice singing unaccompanied, an untrained voice, in a public context, it's quite strange. You know, it's like putting something quite private into a very public context. So when people encounter the work and hear the voice, it comes together in the main refrain, but then it comes apart again. You might catch snippets of one version as you move through the bridges and then another version in the, at the other bridge. I think it'll be quite a different experience in, in the galleries where it's more focused on, on the words of the song. I think it will be a more of an intimate experience. Well, my work's often be been described as sound sculpture because I'm interested in how sound can define space. I think what, what happens when you hear the sound, even in a gallery context, is you, you become more aware of the space that you're in. And it also heightens your sense of yourself. So I'm interested in, in that, you know, I'm interested in how it works spatially, architecturally. It sound is very visceral, you, ha you have to respond to it. So I think you're, you have an immediate response to it. You're, you're being affected by it. <laughs> 